maths is by its very nature a method to do problem solving and basically every technique that you use in maths is going to be doing that of course it's useful to know how to problem solve things in particular this will be in the context of things like exam questions or otherwise just sort of pieces of information you're given and told to find an answer one place I think it's always useful to start is this thing here, the equal sign, which in maths is not given enough credit in my opinion. Uh, the reason why it's two parallel lines like this is because a parallel line is a way of saying that two things are straight, they'll never intertwine, so it's a way of saying they are the same. So whenever you're doing problem solving, what you're really doing is trying to find something which is the same as something else. And usually in maths that involves using multiple techniques. If you could only use it with one technique then it wouldn't really be much good. So these are applicable to many different techniques, but bear in mind that some of these steps are obviously going to be a lot more involved than others, but having a good framework is always an excellent place to start. Thinking specifically about, well, let's go for an actual maths exam question, we'll go over this little framework which can help you establish how to solve these problems. First of all, trying to get it in terms of something equaling something else, and then actually solving it. So first of all, read the question. I know it seems very obvious, but whenever you're reading a question, particularly an exam scenario, they're trying to give you all the information they possibly can just in that question. And often that can be a little bit intimidating. What's quite useful is to highlight important information for a start. So in this case, for example, if we were to look for important stuff, highlight would probably be its own little verb right there. Now, highlighting useful information is useful. But what I also find is quite a useful step is to then cross off information as it's used in a question. For example, if you're asked to use a particular set of weights in a question, usually you'll only need to use any one of those weights once. So once you use something, you can then just cross it off once it's already been done. And I find that can also reduce the amount of information overload you might be experiencing during an exam. The second thing is thinking about what do you need to do? Uh, again, it seems like a slightly obvious part, but looking to what the question is asking you to do can help here. What's your end goal? What's the end objective? Is it to make something equal to something else? Is it to find an area? Is it to find a weight? Is it to find something measured in pounds? It's useful to think about that and critically, what are you going to need to do that? There's a lot of tools in a mathematician's toolbox and usually questions will give away some piece of information for the topics you'll need, but unfortunately there isn't really any replacement for just having a good understanding of the maths and really thinking about everything. That's really what these problems are trying to do, just to get you to think as much as possible. This third one here is what don't I need, as in what parts of the question aren't you going to need. Some parts of a question end up being called upon earlier and then they're not necessarily needed later, whereas other pieces might just sit there for a while and not be used. This is the value of highlighting from earlier and crossing things off as you go, because if by the time you get towards the end of a question you're not entirely sure what to do next, you might want to then look back at the stuff that you've not yet used. Fourth, what maths technique should I use? Fairly straightforward. This will usually be involved in the question. If it's something to do with angles, then probably using something like trigonometry, whereas if it's something like ratios or simultaneous equations or one of the many other techniques, try and think about one of those. Number five, you've done it. You've used the techniques, you've used what you needed, and now you need to think, is my answer correct? Now, obviously the answer is hopefully yes. Some questions have got a nice little show that, which means you just need to show an answer as equivalent to it. But what this step means is basically engaging in the, I want to call it common sense area of your brain, which is thinking about what answer have I actually written down here? Is this something that's reasonable in real life? To be honest, it takes a step of confidence that can only really happen when you've got enough practice with maths. If you're somebody who's, say, coming from more of like a science background like physics and you get a value of a car is equal to 10,000 kilograms it's good to have an idea of is that reasonable is that not reasonable is that 10 times too big what could it possibly be and the same thing happens in maths if you get an angle which is something like you know a few thousand degrees and something's probably gone wrong in your calculator and similarly if you're asked to find out what the circumference of a circle is which only has a radius of a few centimeters and you have an answer in miles again you've probably got an answer wrong somewhere this last part here is have I done everything? This is a bit more important in the sciences and so on, but it's generally things like have you converted any kind of units that you need to use? Have you written your answer in standard form, decimal places? To be honest, this last part is usually just involving you making things neat and making sure that your answer is presentable, but it is still important to show that you've understood the process fully. Let's actually apply this stuff in the example. So this is a, I'd like to say, fairly typical maths question, which 
I'd like to say this is a fairly typical maths question, which was most of the screen. So let's use our process we just talked about. So I'm just going to read the question once, and then we'll go through and highlight it. In Mrs. Abernathy's shop, five apples cost three pounds. In the same shop, two apples and two bananas cost one pound fifty. How much would one apple and three bananas cost? So let's go through and highlight all the information that's involved here, okay? So we'll highlight what seems to be the useful information for a star. So first of all, we've got five apples. They cost three pounds. In the same shop, so that's just sort of letting us know the context of the question. Two apples, two bananas, cost one pound fifty. And then lastly, how much would one apple and three bananas cost? As far as frivolous information goes, the fact that the shop is owned by the lovely Miss Abernathy isn't really relevant, nor is it really relevant that it's a shop. In many ways, we only really care about the information we've been given, which is about apples and bananas. So it's yet again good to set this out in a way that we can actually use mathematically, because we're probably going to need to use some kind of simultaneous equation. Simultaneous equations always end up appearing whenever you have two sets of equations or two pieces of information. But in order to make this mathematical, we should probably try and abstract the information. And that's kind of doing one of those steps that we talked about before, where we're trying to think about what mathematical terms and what are going to be useful. So in this case, it might be useful, just because maybe we're feeling a bit lazy, to end up writing apples as A, and bananas as B. And then, like I mentioned right at the start, we want to try and make something with an equal sign. Now, eventually, our final result, as we can see here, is going to be 1A plus 3B equals 1. That's our final result. So for that, we need to know what is A and what is B. We're just going to tuck that way down here for now, and we'll come back to it later. So we know that 5A is equal to 3 pounds. Now, this has been written as 3.00. You've got two options here, and this is where I'd like to demonstrate that in maths you really do have options when it comes to how you think about things best. If you'd rather think about that as a decimal value and have 3.00 pounds, that's absolutely fine. Alternatively, you could write this as 300 pennies. It doesn't particularly matter, just as long as you're consistent. This is one of those things about consistency in maths. There is a element of flair and individuality when it comes to it. It's not just one method over and over. So just for the sake of argument, though, I'm going to keep this in terms of pounds, because that's probably what most people would do. Then we've got two apples and two bananas end up costing pound fifty. So I'll write that as 1.50. Now we need to get A and or B on its own, and this is where we use the power of the equal sign. There's a couple of ways that you can end up doing simultaneous equations. We could multiply both of these uh, sides by, or sorry, multiply this one down here by 2.5, which would make it all equal to 5A. However, what I tend to do is make things equal to one quantity first, as that can make our lives easier. So A is going to be equal to 3 over 5, which in this case is 0 0.6 pounds. So that's 60 pence, OK? And then we can substitute that down here. So we know what one apple costs. And now for bananas, we'd say that, well, we know what A is. So 2A, so 2 times 0 0.6 plus 2 multiplied by the banana one <laughs> is going to be equal to 1 pound 50, 1 1.50. So at this point, that means we've got 1.2 plus 2b equals 1.50, so that means that 2b is equal to 0 0.3, so b is equal to 0 0.15, so 15p. So we've got these pieces of information here, and let's cross these off as we go. We've used five apples, we've used the fact that it costs three pounds, we've used two apples, two bananas, costing one pound fifty. That kind of clears up this top line, really, and now if we, for whatever reason, we're kind of getting a little bit stuck here, maybe there's a secondary part to the question, we now know these values. So now we need to figure out how much would one apple and three bananas cost, okay? So let's put this in, in which case, so 1a is equal to, in this case, 0 0.6, and 3b would be the equivalent of 3 times 0 0.15, so in this case, that would be 0 0.6 plus 0 0.45 equals 1.05, okay? So there's our answer. Let's go through the is this correct stage. So number one, does that seem like a reasonable value? Well, I mean, we've got something in value of one, which is, I mean, it's about right by the look of it. Five apples is quite expensive. Apples are more expensive than bananas. If we didn't get a value like 10 pounds, that'd be quite unreasonable, so that seems fine. But the other thing that I've just alluded to there is we are missing something, which is we need to give a value in pounds at the end. Because we picked pounds at the start, we need to have pounds here, okay? Because this is an actual cost, because if we were working in pennies, instead we'd write 105 pennies. And you can do either one of these. These are equivalent. One thing which is worth remembering is that the people who are marking your exams or your tests or whatever, they do also have a brain, allegedly. And that means that they can actually check a lot of the results that you're interested in. OK, 
go. So they know what 105 pence is compared to one pound and five pence. Okay. So looking at it, this all seems fairly reasonable. Now, if we wanted to, we could then substitute this back in to see if we got something else. But at that point, we'd just be reverse engineering one here. That's more easy to do when you've got something like, say, uh, dividing by an answer or multiplying by something, and then you know that you've got a definite answer to work with. That's a very brief overview of the way that you could go through uh, some of these regular problems. And hopefully that's been useful to you guys. So in which case, I'll speak to you guys at some other point, hopefully, and uh, best of luck doing your maths in the future. Thank you.